Hi everyone, this is Sean. Welcome back to my channel. Press the like button, subscribe, share, comment. I am always looking for the dialogue. I appreciate all of you. Special thank you to Slender169101, one of our subscribers. He commented that I should get a microphone or change my microphone. I have been experimenting on different microphones. I've been experimenting on removing the microphone. I'm still using the iPhone 8. I don't know if that has anything to do with the quality of the videos or the quality of the microphone, but it looks like maybe it's time to upgrade. So I will pretty much, I'm, I'm going to take on that suggestion and instead of having the microphones I have now, I'm going to probably buy a new one. I was actually online um, the other night looking for a new microphone as soon as I saw that comment. So I really appreciate the suggestions. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the importance of taking a tactical pause. And I'm not talking about the tactical pause where you wait to make a decision or you absorb the information. And while you absorb the information, you come up with a plan and that gives you time to think thoroughly about a plan. I'm talking about a physical tactical pause. Before we begin, I want to talk a little bit about my background. I started private security at the age of 18. It was a, it was about maybe a week after I turned 18. I'm going on 42 this year. I've been in security and law enforcement for a very long time. My first year working private security, I worked mall security, and that is where I made the majority of my mistakes. Um, I did have a lot of people that mentored me, but sometimes I was on my own and I made some stupid, idiotic de decisions. And I was the type of person at that time where I wanted to get into action. I wanted to get into the confrontations with people what do, you, what do you expect? Uh, I was 18 years old and I was, it, it, private security was exciting to me at, at that point in time. So like I said, I wanted to get into the action and I would sometimes, I'm, I'll admit it right now, almost 23 years later that I sometimes provoke people. And that is me talking to you as, as a human being. That's when I started at, at, as, at age 18, about a week after. So what I learned is this, give people that space okay, give them that space so what i see some security officers doing sometimes is they're telling somebody to leave the property and they're just following directly behind them and that person is hurling insults towards the security officer and the security officer is responding back with either insults or just unprofessional conduct um, usually in the form of language let them breathe, you guys. Let them vent. They're not upset about you. They're upset about maybe the system that's that's against them. Give them that time. You also have to realize most of the people that you remove from property, from private property, the ones that you trespass, most of them are transients. And I'm not speaking low of transients. They have a challenge to overcome. And I'm not talking about them versus us. They're remember they're human beings just like us. But you have to imagine that they're going through difficult times in their life. A lot of times they suffer from behavioral health challenges. They're not medicated. Their mind leads them to improper conduct, improper social behavior. Um, yes, it, it is their fault when, when they act on their emotions. But we need to give them that that time to process information. Um, our transit population is also filled with alcoholics, uh, filled with people who are addicted to narcotics. You know, let's 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 face it. The majority of transit population either addicted to drugs, alcohol, or have behavioral health challenges. And then there's always that that few, that small percentage that just wants to live as a transit. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, they want to live. In, they want to be a, tran a transient um, and, and live on private property, okay? And there's nothing, I mean, inherently there's nothing wrong with it. However, when management calls you guys or it's your job as a private security officer to remove them, then it, then it, it, then it becomes a, a problem. So give them that time. Also, a lot of transients have been through the criminal justice system. You're talking about prison, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I have I get a lot of information being in law enforcement. I'm able to run their criminal record after they're arrested, obviously, um, and their local criminal history. And what you'll find is you'll find burglaries, you'll find theft, you'll find assaults. Sometimes you'll find homicide, sometimes manslaughter, assault with a deadly weapon. 
A transient is somebody who is tough. Just imagine yourself. And so, actually, I've had students, ladies and gentlemen, that were homeless. They're, they're transients of mine when I was teaching at, at Brightwood College in Palm Springs, formerly known as Kaplan College in Palm Springs. I had about two transients. They were alcoholics. They were addicted to drugs. And they would live, um, you know, what one would live on the, on the rooftop and another would live in the parks. And again, they they try to better their life. Um, you know, there's always that there's always that room for change. So, it, it, anyhow, before I lose my 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 my, my train of thought here, um, you know, a, a, a lot of them are tough. Like I mentioned, they've been through the system. Um, they've been assaulted. Okay, imagine you're not under the safety of your own shelter. You're living in in the streets. These are these are tough. Even the women that you guys see out there, they are tough women. I'm telling you, um, a lot of them sur survive Corona. You could just just imagine what they're immune to out there, just because of the of the nature of the environment that they that that they live in. Um, rain, shine, extreme heat, transients are tough human beings. So g please give them that space. Give them that time. When you remove them from property, just don't follow behind them give insults or keep telling them to to get out of here keep moving let's 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 try something better when you remove somebody from your property just let them walk off take small steps towards them when they're already a good distance away just to make sure that they're not coming back but there is no need to walk right in back of them there's no need However, if you're working maybe inside of a retail store, you're gonna be a lot closer to them than if you're working in a, in a parking lot. And you're working inside a retail store or a restaurant, then you're gonna be a, a lot more closer to this person than if you're outside. But if you're outside, okay, let them walk away. Just let them keep going. If they start yelling insults to you, just be the sponge. You guys, the, those insults are not towards you. Don't take it personal. Let them, let them vent. Okay, they're processing how angry that they are, and a lot of them are, they're, they're working with their anger issues. They know that that anger, but this is what's gonna end up happening. If you keep pushing them, you keep following them, like back to back, not giving them that space, they are going to turn around and attack you. And I'll tell you this, as a private security officer, you are more in danger than a police officer because with a police officer, you can easily call for backup. Most of the time as a private security officer, you're either unarmed or you're armed and you're by yourself. And like I mentioned in other videos, that person who you are, who you give a trespass warning to, that person has a gun. And that gun happens to be your gun when they overpower you. Those of you who carry tasers, who's never used them before, or maybe used them once, um, think twice. Well, I wanna give extra thought to your taser. I've used a taser a lot. I use baton a lot as well. Tasers don't work all the time. Taser International used to boast, I think somewhere about a 80% success rate. Success rate now they boast over a 95%, somewhere in that range. There's been other studies with other departments, large agencies, and they found that the effective rate for tasers was 75%, and there are some for 50%. If I have to give a number out right now, just thinking off the top of my head, while I'm in my home studio, um, my, from what I've seen, from the times that I use a taser and what I've seen my, when I've seen my partner use taser, aggregate data, just a rough estimate, I would say about, about 65, maybe 68% of the time the taser works. Most of you carry the taser X26. Once that taser is deployed, you're going to have to reload. That takes a significant amount of time. Between the time that you eject the cartridge to the time that you reload, that's a good window opportunity for that person who you just removed from property, that person, that's a good time for them to attack you, great opportunity. And we're in a position now that a lot of us think that the taser is a one-all solution, one size fits all solution. So you deploy your taser, it works automatically, the person goes down, it, it does not, I'm gonna repeat, it does not work that way. That's why you gotta have alternative, alternative weapons, like a baton like pepper spray, okay? If, and, and, and by the way, if you carry 
if you carry a firearm, you should carry a baton, carry a taser, carry a baton as well. What a baton does, it gives you the opportunity to create that space. With that space, you create more time, and then you have more time to react to the, the threat. But please, guys, stop thinking because you have a gun, because you have a taser, you have a firearm. I'm sorry, I just mentioned that. Um, a pepper spray, a, a burner device. That doesn't mean you're invincible. Do you know when you stop realizing you're invincible? Is when you finally get into a knockdown drag out fight and all of the weapons that were reasonable to use, you use them and it's not working. Even when you hit somebody with a baton and they laugh at you. Okay, that's when it becomes real. That's when you realize, wait a minute, what am I doing as a private security officer? If you're out there thinking that all of your tools are going to work, let me ask yourself this. Have you been in a, in a knockdown drag out fight? And if you had, it had to be knocked down drag out because most likely you were working by yourself. That's the major, majority of private security personnel work by themselves. You can have dispatch call PD, contact the sheriff's department, but they're going to take some time to get to you. So once again, guys, give people that tactical a physical tactical pause if they're leaving the property let them leave already there's no need to walk behind their back I do recommend give them a safe distance um, wherever you told them to leave st stay in that area if it's safe to do so and just watch them observe them leave the property and then once in a while while they're leaving take take a few steps forward take us two steps a couple steps to the sides um, walk closer to them, but I'm talking about if, if you can, 50 yards, 100 yards, um, maybe even 25 yards, okay, maybe 15 yards, but give them the distance. Um, once they're already walking away, guys, they're gonna they're gonna stop. They're gonna stop. They're gonna take a deep breath. They're gonna reconsider their options. They might reconsider coming back on the property. Just let them think. Give them that time. Again, a lot of them are suffering from behavioral health challenges, um, learning disabilities. It takes them a little bit longer than some people to process the information. So if they just stop and look at you, just wait a couple of seconds. There's no need to keep telling them to leave, move on. <coughs> Excuse me. Give them that time. Okay, just give them, give them, give them that time, and let, let them leave, hopefully on their own terms. <coughs> Excuse me. This video helps you guys. Please press the like button, subscribe, share this video with somebody who might be able to use this information as well. Looking for a dialogue, you guys. Please, please, please be safe.